This video was sponsored by Factor. Hey, in this video, we're going to build something in the Airstream. Are we going to do it right? I don't know. Are we going to be happy with what we do? I don't know. Why am I referring to me as we? I don't know. But follow along, watch the progress, check the links in the video description to tools and supplies. There's also a link to Patreon down there. If you're not signed up, putting a lot of the backstage footage of this build over there. So if you really want to see my screw ups, go sign up for Patreon. Without any further ado, let's climb inside this tin can and build something. Now my driveway is far from level. So before I started working inside the Airstream, I wanted to pick a place that was at least somewhat level. So I moved the trailer over to our concrete pad and I adjusted it until, well, it was as level as I could get it. Keeping in mind that the subfloor itself is a little wonky, so there is that. Then I set to cleaning out the inside of the Airstream of anything I didn't need in my way while I was building. Spare tire, toilet don't need that yet so here it is my blank canvas of an airstream where do you even begin i don't know because i've never done this before how about with these squishy plastic things now there's one part of the inside of the trailer that really can't be changed and that's these wheel wells they have to be there so I figured the easiest thing to do would be to box them in, get them nice and square, and give me a solid surface that I could build other things off of. So feeling very intimidated and having no clue what I was doing, I just started cutting pieces of plywood. Now the inside of an Airstream is curved. There's not a straight wall in the entire thing, which means that absolutely every piece of wood that comes in contact with one of those walls is going to have to be custom cut to fit that specific section of wall. Thankfully, this first section just had a little bit of a lean, not really that much of a curve. So I was able to use my Rockler crosscut sled at an angle and cut an angle that matched the wall pretty well. I also have all my water lines running around the inside of the interior, so I needed to notch out for those. After cutting my piece at the front of the wheel well, I figured I might as well try it at the back and who knows, maybe it'll fit. And this is how much it did not fit. What the heck man, this is gonna be a task. So I took my first piece back inside my shop and I notched out a little section for those water lines to pass through. Then I slid my piece back into place and as you can see it fits nice and tight up against that wall. So far so good. Then I cut a new piece for the other side of the wheel well. This one I cut in an angle, which got me close to the shape, but it was still pretty far off, which meant I needed to scribe. I just went old school, took a sharpie, ran it along the edge of the wall, and transferred that line onto my piece of plywood. Then it was back into the shop, and I cut that line with the bandsaw. Then back into the Airstream, and not too bad. I can live with that fit. With my two side pieces cut, I cut a long strip to go along the back. Now the trick with boxing in these wheel wells is I can't support anything off of the well itself because it's just flimsy plastic. So after I cut my strip along the back, I added a few notches on the top. I figured I could make some sort of rib system coming off of that back support and curving around over the wheel well and down to the floor. Is this going to work? I don't know. To attach that back support piece, I just used self-tapping metal screws. The one nice thing about the inside of the Airstream is that all the skins are metal, so I can screw right into them. Yes, I did try and hit ribs where I could, but where I couldn't, I just went right into the sheet metal and the self-tapping metal screws seem to hold everything nice and solid. This was the method that was recommended to me by the people that, you know, know what they're doing. Once I had my back brace piece attached to the wall, I used it to get the height of my two side pieces. Then I cut my two side pieces to that height, and while I was at it, I cut a full length front piece to complete my box for my wheel well. 
Now the wheel well itself isn't square. It angles in as it gets taller. So once I had my front piece cut, I used a combination of these right angle clamps and a square to get the distance out from the wall and cut my side pieces to the correct length. If that made any sense at all whatsoever. Once I had my two side pieces cut to the right length, I could clamp on that front piece and it was really starting to look like something. Wow, Jason, you're an amazing woodworker. You made a box. With my box taking shape, it was now time to cut those ribs that would notch off of that back support piece. So I just went into the shop and started drawing out shapes on a piece of plywood. And I completely guessed when it came to the angle for that front wheel well, because I figured it doesn't have to be exact. It's gonna be inside of a box and nobody's gonna see it. And lucky enough, when I went back into the Airstream and slid them into place, they fit pretty much perfect. How about that? The blind nut finds a squirrel every now and then. Because this method worked so well on this wheel well, well, I did the exact same thing on the second wheel well. With one slight modification, I added one more rib because on this wheel well, it butts right up against my hot water heater, which is plugged into this outlet. And I don't know if this is right, but it just seemed like I shouldn't completely cover that up. So I wanted to be able to leave that open, maybe with an access panel. I don't know, just seemed like a good idea. So I added an extra rib to build off of. Now that I had all my parts and pieces cut and I knew they would fit together the way that I wanted them to, I had to figure out a way to attach them both to the floor and to the wall and to each other for that matter. Enter the pocket hole jig. Nothing says vintage Airstream like a bunch of pocket holes, am I right? So with a combination of pocket holes straight into the subfloor and metal screws into the wall and regular wood screws holding all of my butt joints together, I managed to get both of my wheel wells boxed in and they were pretty darn solid. Now the real question, where the heck do I go from here? I knew I had to start working on the bed at the very back of the Airstream. So naturally, I stood around and stared and looked on my phone for inspiration and then stared some more overthought the process stared some more got back on my phone and looked for more inspiration pictures stared and stared and stared i really had no clue what to do next well i think i did the easy part I don't really know because I've never done any of this before, but I got these wheel wells all boxed in. They're very, very solid, which I'm happy about. I'm not gonna put a top on these yet because I still need access to these water lines. I gotta tie into them for the sink in the bathroom and the sink in the kitchen and drains and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna leave them open for now. Now that these are done, I'm going to start working on the back bed and kind of work my way forward. Now we're going to do a bed. It's going to be a full size. I thought about a queen, but we just don't need a queen. I'm going to do a full size. You're going to have to crawl into bed from the end. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, that's going to be really inconvenient and you should make it so you can walk around it. Well, that would be fantastic, but there's just not enough room. And I don't really want to do it sideways because then one person's going to have to climb over the other person to get out of bed in the middle of the night or whatever. So I think this is the best bet. We're going to start building boxes from the back working forward. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to stop yet because eventually there's going to be a wall here. Should I build the wall first and then the boxes? I don't know. We're just going to start building stuff. Now, some things to take into consideration. I don't want to waste any space that I don't have to. There's this access panel in the back. So as I'm building out this bed platform, I'm going to try and make storage underneath it that you can reach from that back access panel. I also am going to make storage that you can access from the front of the bed. I'm not sure if I'm going to do like kind of like lift up the mattress and there'll be an access panel under there or a drawer at the front. I don't know. I just, I don't know. We're just going to start doing this and we're going to see where the road takes us. Well, if that pep talk doesn't instill confidence in you, I don't know what will. 
So with literally no clue where to start, I figured I might as well template out these back corners. Because no matter what I build, it's going to have to match the curve of those corners. So I started with cardboard, because cardboard's hard to mess up. I just kept cutting it kind of to the right shape, wiggling it into place, then using my hand as a scribe, just running my knuckles along the edge of the airstream, and transferring a line onto the cardboard. Once I got a nice curved shape, I would just take that piece of cardboard, pull out my pocket knife, and I'd cut it to my line. Then once I got it cut, I'd stick it back in place. Each time it would be a little bit closer, and I would fine tune it, cut a little bit more, trace another line, cut a little bit more, until I got a fit that I was happy with. I was quickly starting to realize that my obsessive compulsive nature when it comes to fitting things together is going to be the death of me because there is going to be a lot of scribing in this, and naturally I'm gonna want it to all be perfect. Multiple people have told me I need to lower my standards when it comes to this process, because you're never gonna get it perfect, but I refuse to listen to them. So with my cardboard template cut roughly to the right shape, I went into my shop and I transferred that shape onto a piece of quarter inch plywood. This is just cheap birch plywood that you can pick up pretty inexpensive at any big box store, but it works great for cutting templates. So after transferring that line onto my quarter inch plywood and cutting it out on the bandsaw, I went back into the Airstream. And yes, I fine tuned that line a few more times. Again, just using my finger as a scribe until I got it pretty darn close to perfect. Of course it wasn't perfect, but all right, I'm already over the perfect thing. It's close enough. And with one side cut to the right shape, I figured I might as well move it over and see if it fits on the other side, which, of course, it didn't. Now, before I got ahead of myself, I wanted to try and get a square line across the back of the Airstream. Now, this is extremely difficult to do because none of the walls are straight. So I measured out the same distance from both sides of that back hatch, I made two marks, and then I used a track to draw a straight line. This might not be perfect, but it's pretty close to parallel with that back wall. Now what I'm gonna do next is build a storage compartment that you can access from the outside of the Airstream through that back hatch. This will be under the bed, but you'll access it from outside. I'm trying to use every last little bit of storage I possibly can so that I'm not wasting any space. So after templating my right side and my left side, I marked both of those pieces because they are definitely not interchangeable and I didn't want to mix them up. Then I just cut a squared off piece to fill in the middle section. Went back into the Airstream and labeled that one as well. Because I'm pretty tired and I might forget that that rectangle is the middle. Now the whole reason I'm templating out this shape at the back is I need to raise the floor up high enough to hide all those water lines and the electrical wires. So I have to build up the floor just a little bit, in this case only an inch. So I cut a thin strip of birch plywood, just an inch wide, and I marked both ends where I need it to curve. Then I went over to my miter saw and setting it to the trenching feature on the capex, I just started kerfing the crud out of it. If you don't know what kerfing is, it's cutting a bunch of relief cuts partway through a piece of wood so that you can bend it. I have a feeling I'm going to be doing this a lot on this build. Then I took that giant strip into the Airstream and I bent it around the back wall. This will be the start of my support to raise that back floor up just enough to hide all these water lines. Once I had my piece in place, I just secured it to the outside of the Airstream again with some self-tapping metal screws. Then I started adding bracing in the middle section so that my plywood wouldn't sag. To attach these pieces, I just pre-drilled and used some wood screws. And then of course I added one final brace piece along the entire back. This is the depth of my back storage compartment. And once again, I just screwed this to the subfloor. I had to be very careful when I was screwing things to the subfloor not to go too deep. I knew the subfloor was 5 eighths of an inch thick and below that were my gray water tanks. So definitely don't want to screw into the top of those. 
With all my brace pieces screwed to my floor in the back of the Airstream, I went inside and using my three template pieces, I transferred that shape onto a nice piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood. Now you might be asking, why didn't you just use your templates and a flush trim router bit and cut it perfect? Well, the truth of the matter is you're not actually ever going to see this piece and that just seemed like a waste of time. I thought I could get it close enough with the jigsaw. I carried my full length piece into the trailer, I set it in place, and maybe I should have used a router. It was close enough for a piece of wood you're not going to see, I suppose. Having pre-marked where all my brace pieces were, I attached this full piece of plywood to those brace pieces with a few screws. Making sure, of course, to avoid the water lines and the electrical cables that were underneath. I am not great at eating healthy when I'm working out in the shop. I'll be working all day, I'll be getting hungry, and I just reach for the first thing that's around, and that's usually junk food, which is why I was so excited to find Factor Meals. If you're looking for calorie conscious options, Ahead of summer, try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Need an extra boost of energy to support your wellness goals this spring? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. The other thing I love about Factor Meals is that lots of times I'm just too busy to cook, but with Factor you can skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat them up and enjoy. Then get back outside and soak up that warm weather. One of my goals this year was to get in better shape. So I've been in the gym first thing in the morning and I don't wanna make a big breakfast, but Factor also has these keto shakes, which are perfect for my early morning workouts. So if you're tired of cooking and want an easier way to get good meals, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code bourbon50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. With my back panels screwed in place and my floor raised up, now I had to determine the height I wanted my bed. Now that's all gonna be determined by the height of this storage compartment, and I want it as low as I possibly can so I have plenty of room between the top of the bed and below that window. So I needed something thin. I opted for this piece of aluminum angle iron. I figured it's plenty sturdy to hold a sheet of plywood for the platform of my bed, and I could use these self-tapping metal screws to go right into the bracing above this storage compartment opening. With that piece screwed in place, now I could figure out the height of my bed and cut all of my other support pieces. I started out by cutting two side support pieces. Now my thinking behind building this entire bed was creating spaces for storage as well as getting enough support to hold the plywood for my bed platform. So after cutting two support pieces on top of my back little raised platform, I cut two more pieces matching the shape of the wall on the left and the right, and I'll use these to cut one full length piece along that entire back storage section. I'd also like to pause here and just remind everybody watching that I don't know what I'm doing. So although I might sound confident as I explain what I was doing, just remember I'm making all of this up. Fortunately enough, both the angles on this full piece were just straight lines. So I was able to cut those with the track saw and then I just had to cut a little notch with the jigsaw so that it would go over those water lines. Then it was the now very familiar journey from the wood shop back into the Airstream, hoping that this full length piece would fit exactly as it needed to. So I slid it in place and wow, a rare instance where it fits just right on the first try. Now that I've created all these divider pieces slash support pieces, I wanted to start thinking again about storage. There was this void on each corner that I wanted access to. You know, you might want to store something in there. And I thought you could reach in farther from that back panel, so I figured I might as well cut some holes in that back support piece as well and create more storage a little farther forward. Now the easiest way to do this would be probably a CNC but I don't have one of those. What I do have is a Shaper Origin, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a handheld CNC. 
It's computer operated, it's really hard to screw up, and you can cut out perfect shapes. So I pulled that out and I cut a bunch of access holes for all of my various support pieces. First for this back section. With these holes cut, I'll be able to build another box farther forward that will create more storage and give added support for my bed platform. I also cut holes in these side supports if they would just stay in place. So now you can reach into these little corner cubbies and store your socks or whatnot. With all of these pieces cut, I was back to staring and wondering what in the world I should do next. When in doubt, screw things to the floor. Once again, I just attached all of these pieces with pocket holes directly into that 5 8 subfloor and metal screws slash pocket holes directly into the side of the Airstream. And once again, it worked pretty darn good. Now the nice thing was I finally had a straight line, which meant it became much easier to build things off of at that point. I just didn't know exactly where to stop the bed because I didn't know where my wall was going to be. So I figured out where my wall should be and I drew some lines. Now I know I can bring the bed that far forward if I want. So before I went any further, I decided that I should probably check my storage system and make sure that it would fit the essentials, my golf clubs. And sure enough, they fit in there no problem. And if I make this section right here long enough, they'd also fit through that little hole. Interesting. But I still had one issue. I didn't know how far forward to bring the bed. Do I bring it right to the wall? Do I leave it off the wall a few inches? It was late, it was dark outside, and my brain was too tired to make decisions like that. So I decided to call it a night and worry about that the next morning. So the next morning, as the sun was coming out, I headed back out to the Airstream with a cup of coffee in my hand, determined to just make a decision and keep moving forward. Well, when in doubt, just pick an arbitrary measurement and stick with it. I decided to hold the foot of the bed back from the wall an inch. That would give me enough room to add a face frame on the front if I wanted and still have a little wiggle room that I could always trim out later. So with my footboard piece essentially in place, now I could start building all the internal compartments and storage bays underneath the bed. First, I created this longer section on the right for my golf clubs, of course. Then to the left of that, I made a few more storage bays. These ones a little shallower so that you could easily reach them from that back opening. And I inserted some dividers. Again, all these are creating storage spaces as well as support for my actual bed platform. Then I wanted to create a giant drawer at the front of the bed that you could access from inside the trailer. But in order to do this, I needed to know exactly where my hallway between my kitchen cabinets and my bathroom would be. That box on the right represents how much space I need for the toilet. So I set that in place to figure out exactly where my bathroom wall would be and then drew another line where I would bring the kitchen cabinets to. This gave me a rough opening for the hallway and allowed me to frame in for a future drawer. Now I'm not gonna cut the opening for the drawer just yet, but I can always cut through that plywood later. So rest assured, this giant box that I'm sitting in will eventually be storage. It was about 6.30 in the morning at this point, and the foreman finally decided to wake up. Typical foreman's always sleeping while the other guys are hard at work. Little did I know he was peering in the window, checking and making sure I was doing my job. And like the good foreman he is, he came inside, still in his PJs, and gave me a hug and a few words of encouragement. Which, to summarize, were basically, hey dad, come inside and make me breakfast. So I did. Now where the bed framing met this box for the wheel well, it was a little taller than the wheel well box. But luckily it was exactly one inch taller. So I was able to cut two pieces of half inch plywood doubled up and level everything out there. 
Next, I needed to add some support around the perimeter of the bed framing so that my plywood would have a lip to land on. So it was back to cutting more curved pieces of plywood to match the radius of these corners. Lucky for me, I like curving. There's something methodical about it. Once I had those pieces cut to length and slid into place, I just attached them right to the side of the Airstream with some self-tapping metal screws. And what you do on one side, well, of course, you have to do the same thing over on the other side. After getting those corners out of the way, I was able to use just straight runs of half inch plywood because it was bendy enough to match the slight curve on the sides. And what you do to one side, well, of course, you have to do to the other side. Now on this side, there's also an exterior access panel. So I built up the bottom just as I did on the back of the trailer to hide all that electrical and water lines and give myself a nice flat bottom. Now, obviously I can't use a single sheet of plywood to cover this entire bed. So I'm going to have to use multiple pieces, which meant I had to add a few more brace pieces everywhere. There was going to be a seam. And before I got too much further, I wanted to make all the exterior storage compartments a little nicer, a little fancier. And nothing says fancy like indoor outdoor carpet. So after taking rough measurements of all of my exterior accessible compartments, I went into my shop and I started cutting up pieces of carpet. Then it was back into the Airstream where I just started shoving them in place. I just kind of roughly pushed them where they needed to go and I cut them to shape with a sharp knife. I mean, might not be the correct way to do it, but hey, it worked pretty good. And it really elevated the look of the whole ensemble. Pretty soon I had all the pieces cut and in place. And then I just used some spray adhesive to hook them down to the bottom. And yes, I did get a little high spraying spray adhesive in a tin can. Maybe should have opened the windows. With that, it was finally time to cut all of my plywood pieces and put a lid on this thing which of course meant it was back to templating and scribing more curves. Now I still had these templates from lower down and I knew they wouldn't fit, but I figured it would be a good place to start. So I cut them down roughly to the shape that I needed them to be. And then they were close enough that I managed to get a pretty good scribe line on my first pass. So this time just using a mechanical pencil and my finger as a guide, I scribed a line on there, went back into the shop, cut that line with the bandsaw, which by the way, is turning out to be the hero tool of this entire build. And then of course, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Now, because those templates were a little too small to get me to where my first plywood seam would be, I needed to create a second template right behind that to get us to our first seam. But that's okay. If you have two templates and you need them to be one, you just use a little CA glue and a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood. And look at that one single template. Good as new. Then it was back into the shop to trace this shape onto some more half inch Baltic birch ply. Now you think I would have learned my lesson and just use a flush trim router bit to cut it out, but no, I just went back to the bandsaw because believe it or not, you're not going to see any of this either. And to be honest, I was able to get it pretty darn close on the bandsaw. Must be the hours of practice I had at this point, cutting, flipping curves. Once I got my two corners cut, well, the rest was pretty simple because that middle piece was pretty close to square, just a little bit of scribing on the back. And it was already starting to feel like a bed. This front middle piece was just a giant square. So I was able to just cut that with a track saw. And my two side pieces were pretty much just a taper. So I was able to cut those with a track saw as well. And just like that, I had plywood covering the entire back of the Airstream with ample storage underneath. Sure, it still needed a little adjustment, but I was pretty happy with my progress so far. I was also very over 
scribing and templating out curves. But I have a feeling this is just the beginning. As you can see, now from the outside, we have plenty of storage compartments and cubbies to hide away all your various camping and traveling things. I don't know what I'll put in here. Rope? Seems like people need a lot of rope when they're RVing. Is that a thing? Maybe a bocce ball set or something? <sighs> well, I have no clue if I did any of that correctly. I've never built an Airstream before. I've never RV'd in my life, so I don't know what people want in RVs. But we have a bed, sort of. This is nowhere near complete. I'm still gonna have to cut access panels to all those cubbies that I can't access from the outside. I have to create a big old drawer in the bottom here that'll pull out into the hallway. And then, in next week's video, I'm gonna make wraparound storage that is about 10 or 12 inches high. It'll go around the sides and underneath that window to create a nice little space for the mattress. How am I gonna do that? The walls are curved and at an angle. And I don't know. Tune in next week to find out. For now, check out the links in the video description to all the products and tools that we used. And there's a link down there to Patreon. If you're not signed up for Patreon, we're putting a ton of behind the scenes footage of this entire build over on Patreon, so you don't want to miss out on extra co extra content. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, it's flipping hot in here. Anyways, check the links. I'm gonna go jump in a river somewhere. Ugh.